Get ready, America, for this is the best of Destination Small Town, a Quack TV production featuring the shows that have taken Sweet Swine County by storm. The reality hit, The Real Housewives of Sweet Swine County, Sweet Swine's favorite music show, Backstage at the Commune, the tastefully done cooking segment, Cooking It Up with Betty, the always zany soap opera, As the Corn Grows, and of course, the wildly popular talk shows that share what's happening inside and outside Sweet Swine County. Which shows will you be seeing today? Stay tuned and find out right after the break. Who are these people and what are they doing? Well, they're talk show hosts, tourists, celebrities, and reporters from your neighboring county of Sweet Swine. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County, and they're sharing what they've learned about the businesses and points of interest in the small towns of the Midwest. Learn all that they learned on DestinationSmallTown.com. This program has been made possible by SweetSwineScoop.com, the online magazine that keeps Sweet Swine County citizens informed on what's happening. For if it happens in Sweet Swine County, it's news to us. Get ready, because now you can see a late-night talk show filmed in front of a discerning yet agreeable studio audience. Split hoof tonight! Cousin John and his incomparable sidekick, Earl Silo, interview a roster of guests who make appearances that you won't want to miss. Now on this station and the web. Exciting episode of As the Corn Grows! Today we join Lonesome Ron as he meets with Miss Cassidy Davis to discuss her new record deal with Pig and a Poke Records. I'm alone and there's people all around me in each other's arms everywhere. There was a time when Now I look and I don't see you there And when I'm driving down a busy highway Or walking through the crowded streets of town I know what an empty heart can mean When there's only broken dreams And I'll be all alone in a crowd Yes, I'll be all alone in a crowd Oh, Lonesome Ron, you are a musical genius. How did I ever get so lucky as to join forces with you? You know, I'm the lucky one in this duet, boy. Oh, ever, no. ever since I took you under my wing, my, well, our careers have exploded. You're right. You know what happened yesterday? The CMA called. The Country Music Awards. No, Country Music Awards. The Cornrow Music Association. Oh my gosh. They want us, listen to this, they want us, you and me, to headline the Cobb Days Music Festival this year. <laughs> the Cobb Days this Music year? Festival? Yes. Get out of here. I'm serious. And they've, okay, they've already booked Taylor Slow to be our warm up act. And cute little Barry Overwood to sing mm. the national anthem. He's, I know, he's cute. Taylor Slow. I can't wait. Barry Overwood. Yeah. You, you know what this means? No. It means we've made it, kiddo. Oh. We're in the big leagues now. You know what? I have nobody to thank but you, Lonesome Run. It seems like just yesterday I was a fresh faced kid getting off my private jet from Hollywood. <laughs> Lonesome Run, there's a Cassidy Davis here to see you. Uh, please send her in, Wilma. 
Oh, hello, Lonesome Run. It is so good to see you. Thank you so much for meeting me, even without an appointment. You know, my plane just got in an hour ago at the Sweet Swine Airport, and I just could not wait another moment to meet you. No problem, my dear Miss Cassidy. I always have time for a fellow colleague, especially when it's beautiful and talented as you are. Oh my, Lonesome Ron, you're making me blush. You know, they did warn me that you are as charming as you are talented. Ah, well, I'm the one who's blushing. I wasn't sure if you'd be interested in a change of venue. You've been the reigning queen of pop for over two years now. Well, you know, I was very intrigued by your letter and I am a Canadian country girl at heart and my heart just led me right here to Sweet Swine. <laughs> did you know that your hit, All Alone in the Crowd, was actually written by me? Well, no, I always thought it was written by Horacio Wintergreen. Hmm. Well, Horacio Wintergreen, that was my that was my stage name when I first really? started out. Horacio But Wintergreen. I lost the rights to that tune in a high-stakes poker game. <laughs> in a poker game? Horacio Wintergreen? <laughs> you know what? I think Lonesome Ron fits you better. It's that whole loner cowboy thing you got going on. It's a good uh, fit. Well, as I stated in my letter, I'm, uh, I'm looking to expand my Pig in a Polk record label to include some fresh new faces and i thought it, you might want to be singing in the country area even though you have been the reigning queen of pop well you know my contract with morning glory records is up for renewal and this is a good time to you know think about my career options and and where are you staying well you know it just so happens that an acquaintance of mine from la moved up here katie olson okay yeah she invited me to come up for the holidays yeah, that must be Aunt Ella's niece that I've heard so much about. You know, I think so. I'll have to ask her. We're supposed to meet for cocktails later at the Cabaret Lounge. Well then, let's set up a meeting with your agent next week, and I'm sure we'll have an album deal ironed out by the end of next month. Oh, wow. Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> Snap out of it, Casty. Oh! Oh, Lonesome. I'm sorry. Okay. What were we talking about? Oh, the album cover. Okay, so I have this amazing idea. The moon over Swine Lake. What do you think? Great idea. I tell you, you get the camera. Okay. And I'll get the canoe the out canoe. of the barn. Yeah. And you know what? It's a clear night. The moon's going to be up in an hour. I will meet you out there at nine, partner. You know, Johnny, I've been thinking. Uh-huh. Now what? Well, you know, it's two months until the wedding, and we really haven't had any discussions about the wedding. Uh-huh. Or the honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Or the prenups. Or the new house. Mm-hmm. No, wait a second. Back it up there. The honeymoon? No, after that. The new house? No, before that. The prenups. There you go. Where's all this prenup nonsense coming from? Well, uh, I don't know. You're a wealthy man, and I just assumed you'd want one. Minnie, have I ever given you any indication that I wanted you to sign a prenup? Well, I just wanted to make sure that you know I'm marrying you for you. Don't be ridiculous. Hell, you got more money now than I ever had. I know, but Lawyer Ed said that prenups are good insurance policies. Lawyer Ed, I should have known he was behind this. Hey, get me a phone. I'm gonna get him, get him off this prenup nonsense right now. We don't need that. End of discussion. Well, no, you can't talk to him. He's uh, out of town at a conference. I think that's what Norma told me at breakfast this morning. Well, that, that, that's good. When he gets back, I'm gonna rearrange his nose. His nose? Yeah, so he can stick it in somebody else's business. We don't need a prenup, Minnie. End of discussion. Calm down. No sense in getting all riled up about this. I just thought it might be a good idea. You know, just in case. Just in case? So what are you trying to tell me now? You want me to sign a prenup? Well, money changes people, Johnny. Boy, does it ever. It's changing the heck out of you right now. Where is this all coming from, anyway? I don't know. Are you trying to tell me you don't want to get married? Well, no. Well, then let's just put all this prenup nonsense away, my little mini May, and let's get married. Well, she's right. Money changes people. Will Minnie stop thinking about prenups long enough to start planning her honeymoon? And will John get his head out of his magazine and figure out that Daniel's putting the moves on his woman? I guess we'll find out after the break. The lifestyles led in the small towns and counties of the Midwest are like no other. But we seldom hear about the points of interest and businesses located in these towns. Well, there's one TV station that's made it their mission to make sure the stories of the small towns of the Midwest are told, Cluck TV. That's right, Cluck TV, located in the neighboring county of Sweet Swine. See all the towns that are covered on KLUKTV.com. 
This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of One Duck, One Ventriloquist, and Autobiography by Lawyer Ed. Talented, driven, Hungry for fortune and fame, the story of a man and his wooden duck against the world. The High Horse Herald says, This guy quacks me up. What a character, and the lawyer's funny too. The New Pork Periodical says, Best two dollars I ever spent on a book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows. Now, we join Mrs. Swanson as she meets with Prairie Ann to discuss Daisy May and Aunt Ella's farm. Hey, I... I rushed on over here. What's up? Hey, thanks for coming, Prairie Ann. <clears throat> I'm just shucking these peas for supper. That's the emergency? You needed another pea shucker? No, no, no. I want to talk to you about your sister, Daisy May. Her? You had me hightail it over here to discuss that little brat? Really? Well, she is your sister. <sighs> Adopted sister, love child of Katie. You know, Mrs. Swanson, I wish we'd never found out about that Selma imposter Swartz Katie person anyway. And you know what? Daisy May and Cousin John are thick as thieves, and I bet, I just bet that as soon as Daisy May gets her hands on that farm, she's going to sell it to Cousin John. You know, I'm having a deja vu moment. Sitting here like this, shucking peas, talking about Aunt Ella's farm. I just feel like we've been here before. I hear that our urban Katie is having a hard time keeping the farm out of the red and out of Cousin John's hands. Well, what's wrong? I thought that Aunt Ella owned the farm free and clear, has for years. She does own the, the land and the home free and clear, but she bought the combine and she, there's a note at the bank, Cousin John's bank. Oh no. Don't you worry. The crop is going to be fine. She'll have more than enough money to pay for the payment for the combine. Well, I don't know about that because Elmer Plow told me that there was this horrid fungus in the soybeans and that a herd of 200 deer got into the cornfield, ate most of the corn, and he said that she'd be lucky if she has enough feed to feed those livestock till spring. Well, but doesn't she have that uh, salary from being an editor uh, saved back for her to from use? the magazine? Yeah. yeah. She took a six-month leave from the magazine, you know, to get settled here. And Aunt Ella, in her will, had allotted the, in the trust fund a year's operating expenses. But since the deer ate half of the mm. corn, and with the payment due, she's in a world of hurt. That's my point. She did ask me to help her come up with a solution to her problems. Well, maybe she should just reconsider that move from California to here. Bite your tongue, Prairie Ann Smackovich. Can't you see that you're going against Aunt Ella's wishes? Oh, come on. Everybody knows that Katie is broke and miserable. Giddy up. Pish posh. She's an Olsen and Olsons don't give up. We'll think of something. Well, Cousin John has offered to buy the farm numerous times. Perish the thought, Prairie Ann. Aunt Ella must be turning over in her grave. Oh, Mrs. Swanson, Katie can't run a farm on a wish and a prayer, and those cows, they're not going to feed themselves. Oh, I know what. what. She could take in a boarder. A boarder? Wait, yeah, she's got that back room. Why, she could easily get $300 a month for rent. Katie would never do that. Trust me, she would never do that. I think that's a good idea. And, Prairie Ann, don't you write the ads for the Daily Boar? 
Well, yes, I do. I do the news and the reporting and the sports and the obituaries. Nosy Norma does the gossip. Okay, Prairie Ann, tomorrow morning, we're kicking out an ad in the paper, Daily Board, and it's going to say, room for Rick! Mrs. Swanson, snap out of it. What did you want to talk to me about anyway? I just need your help to slow down the transfer of Aunt Ella's farm to Daisy May. Well, how's the campaign trail, Ronnie? Oh, great. Couldn't be better. I hear you're putting flyers on all the cars down at Piggly Wiggly. Is that true? Yep, yep. And 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 Charlie Monroe, Marvin's youngest, he's peppering every light pole in town. The slogan, yeah, you get more mileage with silage. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, all right. What are you going to do about Aunt Ella's farm if you win, Ronnie? What, what do you mean by that? You don't expect to continue being farm manager if you win this election for the mayor of Split Hoof, do you? I mean, it's a full-time job. Just seems like yesterday, you and I sat down and talked about you becoming a farm manager. You remember that, Ronnie? Ooh. Glad you could stop by today, Ronnie. Oh, no problem. I had to come to town anyway and get some salt licks for the uh, cattle. So, so, what's up? Well, you know, I've been watching you closely. Okay, is, it, is this about the combine and the drainage ditch again? If, if it is, I'm not talking. Don't tell me that you ran that combine into the drainage ditch No, no, again. no, no. That happened eight years ago, you know? I, yeah, yeah. But every time I run into you, you bring it up again. Well, I won't say that combine safety isn't extremely important, but that's not why I brought you here today, Ronnie. What I wanted to talk to you about was on Ella's farm. Oh, oh, I, I was so sad to hear about her passing. You know, that woman, she she kept her feedlots clean and her silos full. Oh, bless her heart. Well, there is no doubt that she was a great lady. You know, she left the whole farm to her city slicker niece, Katie. I heard something about this from Norm over at Edie's the other day. Katie is Aunt Ella's favorite niece, and you're right, she knows nothing about running a farm. Well, I could, I could give her a few pointers. She needs a lot more than just a few pointers, you see. These two slackers that Aunt Ella hired before she passed ran off and left her high and dry. The farm is a mess. Well, I could, I could, I could round up some farmhands for her, okay? No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm saying is, Ronnie, do I have a deal for you? How would you like to be the farm manager of Aunt Ella's farm, the finest farm in all of Sweet Swine County? Me, me. Wait, me, me managing Aunt Ella's farm? Yes, you. That's a deal, All big right, guy. Yeah. And you and Aunt Ella will not regret it. Oh, Earth Talbert! Jeez, Ronnie, I'm sorry. I must have dozed off. Well, I seem to be having that effect on a lot of people lately. What? Oh, never mind. Never mind. So, so, you think that I have a pretty good shot at getting elected mayor, eh? Well, I don't know about that, Ronnie, but what I can tell you is Earl Silo was down there shaking hands and kissing babies and working the crowd. He's going to be tough. But what I really need to know from you is if you can actually win this election, are you willing to leave the farm manager's job? I guess we'll find out after the break. This program has been made possible by the Swine Song Commune, where musicians, artists, and hippie types live together and share their passions. To learn more, visit the online magazine at sweetswinescoop.com. Get ready, because our culinary expert and, dare we say, wine aficionado beyond belief, Betty Thompson is preparing some tantalizing dishes for us on her show, Cooking It Up With Betty. In the midst of cooking, our dear old Betty does join her What's Cooking reporters traveling throughout our story country. Now, on this station and the web. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows. Now, we join Cousin John 
as he meets with Garrett Dawson to sign his contract with KLUK-TV. Cousin John, there's a handsome young gentleman here to see you. Oh, hey, that must be uh, old Garrett Dawson. Just send him on in. Garrett Dawson? Um, he said his name was... Hey, listen, he's a busy guy. Then. No messing around. Don't keep him waiting. Send him on in. Sure thing. You're the boss. You go right on in there, young man. Hey, hey, welcome. Hey, thanks for meeting me out at the cabin. I appreciate it. Go ahead, have a chair. Didn't almost recognize you there without your cowboy getup on there. With my cowboy getup? What's that, sir? Oh, sir, no, 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 no. We don't stand on formalities around here. Call me Cousin John. All right, Cousin John, I'm here to talk to you about the... About the show. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, when old Sergio, he pitched me that show uh, backstage at the commune, I thought, I couldn't say no. That It was brilliant. Backstage at the commune. Uh, you might have to fill me in here. I'm not sure I'm up to speed. Well, you know, Sergio Ferleone, yeah. you know, he said that you were pretty insistent that we move fast or we were going to lose you as the host. Lose me as the host, okay. Uh, I think we're off to a rocky start. Maybe I should introduce myself. Oh, you don't have to do that, my boy. I've been following Garrett Dawson, his career since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. Garrett Dawson? There. See, we're introduced. Not sure we have. What, a deal? Hey, listen, your agent said that you wanted to summer here in Sweet Swine so you could be closer to Daisy May and Baby Norman. <laughs> My agent said what? Hey, now listen, Garrett, if you're trying to drive the price up, it's time to get your agent in here right now. I think $25,000 a show for 26 episodes is more than enough. But, but I'm, I'm yeah. not... Wilma? Get Garrett Dawson's agent in here right now. Did it? Wilma, don't bother. Cousin John, we have a deal. Where do I sign? Wilma is working up the rough draft here. Just, uh, well, yeah, let's see. Uh, just uh, write your name in here at the top and then sign down there at the bottom. So you're telling me, once I sign this contract, I'm hosting a primetime TV show on Cluck TV called Backstage at the Commune, and you're going to pay me 25000 per episode. That's right. Now quit stalling and, and, and put your signature down there at the bottom. Well, first, uh, when do we start filming? Yeah, just as soon as I work everything out with, uh, with old Daisy May. Daisy May? Well, yeah, your agent said that you, know, you wanted her to co-host along with you, so, you know, hey, deal's a deal. I said that? Hey, just stop stalling and put your John Hancock on that bottom line. Whatever you say, boss. There you go. Lawyer Ed here. Garrett Dawson is here to see you, Lawyer Ed. Who? Garrett Dawson. You know, Norman Crenshaw, Bert and June's boy. Who? Garrett Dawson, Daisy May's boyfriend, the father of your great-grandson. You had me call him and ask him to stop in for a chat. Oh, sure. Send him right in. Go on in, Mr. Dawson. Oh, hey. hey. Have a seat, son. Thank you, sir. Well, I suppose you're here to ask me for my granddaughter's hand in marriage. <laughs> marriage? Man, don't toy with me, son. I'm an old man, and I do own a shotgun. Yeah, you and everybody else in this county. What's, what's that, boy? Look, I'm sorry. I feel like we got off on the wrong foot here. It's no secret Daisy May just had a baby. Yeah, you're a baby. Me? I, I go along with that. It's probably my baby. Nobody toys with my granddaughter's affections. Nobody. Calm down, old man. Don't have a stroke. Come on, they're running DNA tests right now. My attorney's insisted on it. Uh, I told him it's a big waste of their time. The baby looks just like me, but they insisted on it. Why, well, you wormy looking guitar playing, DNA dripping, egg sucking dog. Wilma, get in here. We got. Wilma, Wilma, get in here. Wilma, Wilma we've got a six figure lawsuit with this. Uh, what, what's your name? Garrett Dawson. Garrett Dawson for alienation of affection. My granddaughter. Nobody. Nobody does that to my granddaughter. <laughs> Daisy May is here to see you, Cousin John. Oh, good. Thanks, Wilma. Well, send her on in. Well, hello, my dear. How are you? Please, please, have a chair. Thanks, Cousin John. What's this all about? Garrett called me from Memphis and told me I needed to get in to see you right away. How could he call you from Memphis? What do you mean? Oh, never mind. You know, I have the contracts all drawn up and ready, and they're, they're just waiting for your signature. Contracts? What contracts? Well, I'm producing a new show on KLUK-TV, 
and it's called Backstage at the Commune. And I just signed Garrett Dawson as the host, and he wants to summer here in Sweet Swine this year. Garrett's going to summer here? He didn't tell me anything about that. You know, it's true. He just had one condition. Condition? That's right. He said he would only agree to do this if you were contracted to be the co-host. I said that's a great idea, so here we are. Co-host? What a charming thing for my Garrett to do. Of course I'll do it. But we'll have to delay the shooting until after we're back from our honeymoon in Paris. Honeymoon? That's right. In two short weeks, I will be Mrs. Garrett Dawson. Where do I sign? Yeah, here. It's right here. Um, just just sign down there at the bottom, uh, right right by Garrett's signature there. Garrett's signature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down there. Just, just sign down there at the bottom. Um, you must have handed me the wrong contract. This one's signed by an Alan Morphew. Alan Morphew? Who in the blue blazes is Alan Morphew? Where is Prairie Ann? She's back with a customer, Daisy May. May I get her for you? No, I just want to stand here and stare at you for an hour. That's nasty. <clears throat> I'm beginning to think she's right about you. What's that supposed to mean? What is going on here? She, she started, started it. it. Jessica, honey, will you go help Emma Thompson? And I'll take care of this. What do you want? What do you think I want? Don't you have everything you want, little sister? You had some nerve throwing me a surprise baby shower. Nerve? Whatsoever do you mean? Isn't that my duty as your sister to throw her sister and her nephew a beautiful baby shower? Hello? You had TV cameras there. Well, what do you expect? You're dating Garrett Dawson and you supposedly had his son. Supposedly? He wasn't no monk during his concert tour. Didn't you see those pictures? That was all Everybody saw for, those pictures. That's an act for the camera. Oh, so that's what he told you, huh? Gary and I are getting married, Prairie Ann. Married? He proposed? Yeah, after that circus of a baby shower you threw, Garrett and I made plans to fly to Paris next week and get married. I've heard under good authority that Garrett has been keeping his boots under someone else's bed right here at the Sweet Swine Commune. Giddy up. You're just making things up to hurt me. Whatsoever would I want to do that. After all, you've been so good to me now, haven't you? You know, Garrett would never cheat on me, especially after I had his son. Supposedly had his baby. I heard he ordered DNA tests. His lawyer insisted. Garrett knows that Norman's his son. Oh, really? Well, that's not what the Hollywood Insider is saying. You better read it. I've had just about enough of your rumor-mongering, Prairie Ann. Garrett loves me and he adores his son. And after we get back from our honeymoon in Paris, I will be co-hosting a show on Cluck TV with my new husband, Garrett. Show? What show? You're lying. Excuse me, ladies. Prairie Ann, the phone is for you. Oh, take a message. I just, I don't have time. But it sounds like <laughs> Garrett. Garrett Dawson. <laughs> Well, 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 it looks like the Smakovich sisters are about to start round two. Will Daisy May and Garrett really be honeymooning in Paris? Or does Prairie Ann have other ideas in the works? Find out next time on As the Cone Grows! This program has been made possible by SweetSwineScoop.com the online magazine that keeps Sweet Swine County citizens informed on what's happening. For if it happens in Sweet Swine County, it's news to us. Get ready for a website like no other. A website where you will find stories done by reporters, tourists, and celebrities from Sweet Swine County. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County. With nothing happening in their county, they decided to do some stories about the businesses and points of interest located in their neighboring towns and counties. Take a unique look at life inside the small towns of the Midwest by visiting DestinationSmallTown.com.